The year is 1953, and the post-war economic boom gave every American a chance to own a piece of the pie. Automobile fever had gripped America, and as such gave birth to the era of the dream car. Every American car maker was parading its glimmering glimpse of four-wheeled futurism before a dazzled public. As a result, there was dozens of entrepreneurs and startups attempting to capitalize on it. This is a tale that starts before the beginning of a much larger story. In a small business based in Southern California, a company named Mattel produced its first toy car. And no, it's not the famed and beloved Hot Wheels, it's the one and only Mattel Dream Car. Designed by one of the founders, Elliot Handler. The Dream Car was released in the second half of 1953 and was initially sold at a price of around $1.98. Adjust for inflation, and it would be about 1875 in 2018, which is pretty close to what a roughly 124th scale car still costs today. We are going to be looking at two of the three different dream cars to come out in that time period of around 1953 to 1955. So let's pull out the 1953 version, which is the superior in my opinion. I was lucky enough to get a box with mine, but unfortunately the box is pretty rough. I was able to find some nice scans so we can look at the a better, better version here. Now if you notice, the boxes do not have any indication of color or style, of which for this car there was many. So you may be wondering, how was it sold? Because they didn't have blind boxes back then. That trick would have never worked with people in that era. Old toy stores often had one open and the rest underneath the counters. They were like shoe stores that kept most of the stock out of customer reach. This allowed more variety to display product and keep damage to a minimum. A marketing trick is also involved here with that method. You had to engage the shop owner or salesman to get the item you wanted and that conversation allowed for upselling. Now the only thing that came in the box other than the car was this little instruction sheet that told you how to remove and put back on the bubble bomber top. Mine unfortunately is damaged. Operation of the bubble top is not at all difficult. You just lightly compress the sides and pull up. You can see it's slightly tinted blue and it has a nice metal chrome sheet that's wrapped around the top. You can also see that same chromed sheet material on the fenders. Examination closer of the car reveals that the seats and dashboard are molded in different colors and the steering wheel is a separate piece from the body that's inserted after. Turning it over, you can see a simple friction flywheel motor. As the front wheels roll, it turns a larger weighted disc below it. And this will keep the car moving forward with some force rather than having free wheels. And unfortunately, the steering wheel is a piece that breaks off frequently. I glued mine back on, but it popped right back off again. Overall, it's a very simply designed car, but it's very clean, neat, and indicative of that dream car styling in the 50s. It also came in six different colors, blue, green, yellow, black, red, and ivory. You could also get a variant that had gold bumpers and fenders. And with the help of another collector, I was able to track down the original patent for the dream car. So pause the video and take a look at them. They're really interesting. If you ever run across one of these for a reasonable price, I would definitely pick it up. They're a great piece of Americana. 
a great conversation piece. It's well designed mechanically and aesthetically. 10 out of 10. Let's hop over to 1954 and take a look at the XP 1960, Mattel's second dream car. This one is almost half the size of the original and is not nearly as well made. It sold for $1 less than the dream car at 89 cents, or $9 in 2018. Taking a look at this one, the major changes are foil stickers on the sides rather than the sheet metal, Seats and dashboard are molded with the body with some bad spray ops and a reduced bumper on the front. It's still metal but half the size. A cool addition though is you can see through the grill showing off the flywheel friction motor inside. The base of the car is completely covered in metal sheet and held in place by body pins. The rear lacks the molded tail lights as well. This model also came in only three colors. A bluish turquoise, yellow, and this orangey red. Now, for the XP 1960, I was also lucky enough to find the patent information. And we can see Elliot Handler's name on it once again, paired with Joseph Kossif, someone who I was not able to find much info on, but he has a number of complicated doll patents attached to him. But once again, please pause the video and take a look at these. Before we move on to our final car, the Dart, we're going to take a closer look at the details on the XP 1960. The final one in Mattel's dream car lineup is the Dart. It is essentially the same as the XP 1960, but with a few minor cosmetic changes and one mechanical. Unfortunately, I was unable to obtain one, but here is what I know. It was released in 1955 and sold for a slightly higher price of $1, or again, $9 in 2018. The car was produced in plastic, but was completely chromed. It came in once again, three colors, though tinted this time to show off the chroming, blue, green, and red. The cars had also lost the friction flywheel motor and went to a simple freewheel method. The packaging also switched to a blister pack, which I was not able to find a photo of. So this was an interesting variant in their line, the dream cars. And that's about it. I will try to look for an example of the dart for a future addendum to this video. But in the meantime, if you are interested in some more info about the Mattel dream cars, I would look up SK Files YouTube channel, link in the description below. He helped me find a lot of information I mentioned here. These cars are a really interesting collector's item, especially the 1953 version of the dream car. If you enjoyed the content here, please like, comment, and subscribe. If I have missed anything in the video, don't be shy. Let me know below so I can include it in the follow-up video. 
Also check me out on Instagram, it's the best way to reach me. And I do quite a bit of fun toy photography there. Have a great holiday and I will see you all later.